what do we need to do to ourselves in order for us to win uh, with all the processes and tools that we have? One of the things that we're going to talk about is basically how to align for success. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. And hopefully you'll find this to be very useful. It was something that I wish I had learned earlier uh, because it makes life a lot easier um, and makes it more fun too. So today is going to be about how to align yourself for success. And, uh, you know, I know sometimes people are like, oh, you know, it's kind of weird. You know, like, I, you know, is it it's kind of woo woo or something like this? It, it's not like that. Everything I teach you guys is 100 percent practical and everything I will teach you is stuff that I've used in my life. And mainly most of the stuff I think about to teach you guys is stuff that I wish I had learned earlier because it cost me a lot of pain and it cost me a lot of mistakes. And I don't want you guys to make the, the same mistakes. And first off, we're talking, like, what is alignment? Why do we align? You know, what is this whole thing about? Uh, basically, here on the on the screen, you have basically two different things. You have two light sources. One is a flashlight here. This person's using a flashlight to light up their path. And then you got this guy on the right hand side looking all cool with these glasses and he has a laser. And um, one of the things that I wanted to kind of show you is that if you look at light from physics, um, basically what you see is that a light source like a flashlight or an incandescent bulb, it, it basically sends light all over the place in a very unorganized manner versus a laser, which lasers are all coherent. All the light and all the energy are basically organized in very coherent patterns. As you can see here in this diagram, see how they're all exactly the same frequency, the same period, et cetera, versus the incandescent light has all sorts of different frequencies and stuff coming out of it. This flashlight will do nothing else but to light up the pathway for you and is very important for that. However, this light over here, this laser, can cut through steel. And the difference between the two, they're both lights, they're both light sources. And you'd be surprised, like even some lasers may actually use very small amounts of energy to make amazing results. But the reason why lasers are able to do that is because they are aligned. Everything is coherent. And so whenever you see a principle in physics, you also have to realize that principle exists within the universe, which by definition also can exist within you. And so as we start to see these things, we're going to learn how to use this to make us more successful. So your success will be easier. It'll be way more fun. It'll be less exhausting and it'll be more likely if you are aligned with what you need to uh, achieve and what you want to have as your outcome. So the most effective way to align yourself for success is not to focus on what you want, but to focus on who you want to become. And it may sound simple to say that, but I'm going to break it down and explain exactly why that is. And this is one thing that like I had heard it in the past. Uh, some like I think I heard it a couple of times and never really clicked. And then when it did click, it made a big difference. And so I want you guys to have the same breakthrough and I want you guys to have the same success. There's basically three layers of behavior change. One is outcomes, two is processes, and three is identity. Outcomes are things that you want to have happen, right? So outcomes are like, you know, changing the results, like maybe losing weight, growing your med spa, maybe it's publishing a book, uh, maybe it's, you know, becoming an ex expert injector, whatever, those, those are all outcomes, right? The processes are the systems and habits that that lead to the outcome. So, for example, having a new routine of the gym to maybe help you lose weight, increase muscle. The AIC video system uh, that we deployed earlier, the, the three levels of the videos and the formulas you use to make those videos. That's, for example, a process. And the cold outreach strategy, which we just finished here in the fourth quarter challenge, that's also a process. And one of the things that part of the reason why I want to make this video is that a lot of people have the process but I can see them struggle because of what we're going to talk about next, which is the identity. And your identity is your beliefs, your worldview, and probably most importantly, or the kind of the same as your self-image. The way that you view yourself is actually a lot of, has to do a lot with your beliefs. And if you ever want to see, uh, if you want to really dig into this, you can um, read this interesting book called Psycho Cybernetics. Um, but uh, it's by a guy named Maxwell Maltz, who was a plastic surgeon. And basically the plastic surgeon found that a lot of times when he did surgeries, like he would do someone's like nose job, for example. And then like, even though they would look good, they still had issues because they, they their identity didn't change, even though the surgery had changed their face. A very interesting book if you want to read it. But basically the important thing to take away from this is that the identity is what basically is what will help you grow. So how most people try to grow is they try to focus on their outcomes 
and they try to say like, hey, you know, I want to have more patience in my med spa. I want to have, um, I want to be a better injector. Um, I want to lose weight. I want to whatever, you know, want to, you know, run a marathon. I want to write a book, whatever it is. Those are the outcomes. And then after they, they focus on that, then they try to go backwards to the process and usually never do they ever get to the identity. The actual best way to grow and to align yourself for success is the exact opposite of what most people do. And you'll also see over time that this is, this is a very common trend, by the way, that many times the exact opposite of what majority of people are doing is actually the, the path to success. And there's a mathematical reason why, and we'll, we'll probably talk about that in the future. Um, but just in general, you should always realize that like if everybody's doing something in general, you should probably do the opposite. Anyway, the best way to grow is basically start with your identity. And so the easiest, most successful way to grow is basically change your identity. And then once you change your identity, then it will lead to the processes that you need to do, which will then lead to the outcome. And so let me try to give you a little bit of practical example here. So the goal, for example, if you wanted to become a, if you want to like read a book, it's not to say, hey, I want to focus on reading this book. The goal is to become a reader. And because you are a reader, you'll naturally want to read books. Um, the goal is not to run a marathon, but to become a runner so that you, when you, because you're a runner, you're going to run. And then you have a much more likely chance of actually running a marathon. And then, for example, the goal is not to learn Botox, but the goal is to become an injector because while you can learn Botox, to become an injector means that you have a lifelong of learning. You're always advancing your skills, et cetera. And all you guys know that because you're part of your diamonds and uh, diamonds got to shine. <laughs> I had to throw that in there. Uh, but basically, uh, you know, <laughs> you already are committed to growing in these things because you're here. There's two processes or two steps basically to change your identity. They're very, very simple. One is to decide the type of person you want to be. So basically decide the outcome that you want. So maybe your outcome is, hey, I want to have more people in my med spa. I want to grow my business. I want to be able to not have to work in the operating room. I want to be able to have my own company where I can call my shots, where I can uh, eventually hire other people to work for me. And then I can, you know, take a step back. Whatever it is that your desire is, whatever it is that your outcome is, take a step back and say, who would I have to be in order for that to be true? And it takes maybe 10 minutes, max, maybe 15, worst case, you know, but just take a step back and ask yourself, who do you have to be in order for you to, to reach the thing that you need to do? And when you start to change your identity, what you're going to find is that you start to align yourself for success. And it's way more likely that you're successful because things start to line up. Let's just take, for example, a runner, right? So um, when I was uh, younger, I think I was in, I think I was in med school and like I wanted to run a marathon. I'm not really sure why, but it was sounded cool. And like everybody else was kind of doing it and they got all these medals and it was like, oh man, I want to run a marathon. Like, you know, it sounds like a, an achievement, you know? And when I first started my, my, I tried to do one marathon and I was like, okay, so I need to, I had this like little thing. Like I went online and like did all this research and was like, hey, if you run like, you know, so many miles on week one. And then by week two, you're running so many miles. And like throughout these, like, I think it was like three or four months, like basically you'd, you'd increase your running distance. And then by the time you finish that training, like you could actually run a marathon, right? Basically I tried to do that and I completely failed. And I like, I, I knew that I needed to run, but it got really busy. Something came up, uh, you know, there's always some kind of, you know, external thing happening, uh, you know, whatever, you know, family issue, school issue, whatever something will always happen. And like, even though I did run a couple times, I could never keep consistent with the, the training. And so that by the time I got close to the marathon, I wasn't even close to, to being able to run the 26 miles that's necessary. Um, and, but the next time I did it, I said, you know what, I'm going to start out just by running for fun. Uh, and so basically I started out just running and I actually kind of enjoyed it. It was like a break from a lot of the stress. And like when you run, like you, you can get uh, this, this you know, sensation of like some people call it like a runner's high where you know, after you run for a, a good amount of time, like kind of relax, you know, you're more at peace, this kind of thing. And so basically what happened was because I focused on becoming a runner, not so much like, hey, I got to do this whole schedule to run a marathon. I just naturally wanted to run. And then over time, naturally, it became easy for me to, to stay with that commitment of running because what happened was that I was a runner. Like I had the shoes, I had everything ready to go. And like in every evening, I'd set out my shoes because I used to run every morning uh, when I woke up. And basically, like it became a habit for me. And then that naturally, 
as that naturally occurred, I started going longer, longer distances. I started running more often. And then I was able to do a marathon and I was able to do this really great experience of doing a marathon in Big Sur, California, which is if you get a chance to, to go there, it's very beautiful. Um, and it was an amazing life changing thing. But the only way I got there was not because I started with the outcome that I wanted, but because I started with the identity that I needed to have in order to get the outcome. And it sounds small, but this little trick saves you so much heartache, saves you so much of like trying to put pressure on yourselves, trying to push yourself, trying to, try, you know, all the things that we do all the time, <laughs> you know, we're, especially, you know, for us, you know, in medicine, we're, we're so used to a life of like pushing and hustling and grinding and, and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, when you take that away and you change your identity, all the stuff that needs to happen just naturally flows and it makes it easier. So the most important thing to learn about the two-step process is one, decide who you want to be in order to reach your outcome. And then two, prove it to yourself with small wins. Like I mentioned before with the running, like I started out, I didn't start running, you know, 20 some odd miles. Like I literally just was like, hey, I just want to run today for a minimum of five minutes. And because I was a runner with my identity, I just naturally ran because it's, I'm a runner. It's what we do. We run, right? That made it easy. And then as the small wins start to stack up, each little win becomes a vote of who you want to be. And so by having this system where basically you focus on your identity first, not the outcome, you'll naturally make these small wins and the wins will stack up. And then that identity gets reinforced until you become the person you need to be in order to have the thing. So I hope that was useful for you guys. Um, if you have any questions, throw them in the chat here. Uh, and then basically let's uh, review some of the takeaway points for today. Um, the easiest way to win on anything, whether it's a physical thing, whether it's a business thing, whatever it is, is not to focus on what you want or the outcome, but instead to focus on who you need to become in order to get that outcome. And that would be called your identity. Number two is that there is a two-step process to change your identity. Number one, you want to decide who you need to become to reach your goal. And then two, you prove it to yourself with small wins um, that add up and they reinforce your identity. And number three, each small win is like a vote of who you want to become.